What is fear? Well, before we answer the question about what is fear, we probably need to answer the question about all sorts of these individual questions about individual emotions. And that uh -huh. is that, that all of them are energy of, of a kind, of a certain type, that's stored or expressed by the soul. Yeah. Now, it can be stored or expressed. So that's the other thing we need to understand. So it's a certain type of energy that's stored or expressed within the soul. Mm -hmm. So fear is a type of energy that's stored or expressed by the soul. So yep. it's stored in the soul or expressed by the soul. Mm -hmm. And you can do either with it. Yep. Now, if you store it in the soul, then it becomes a filter for the rest of your experience. Mm -hmm. It also de determines what you attract because yep. God wants you to release this fear. Yep. So God's try, God will try to trigger the fear. God will try to bring, you, you know, your very soul, in fact, all of God's laws. If we, if, if, if I, instead of, I, of using the term God, yep. if I say all of the laws of the universe have been created so that you release fear. Mm -hmm. So if you want to store fear in you, you're out of harmony with all the laws uh, regarding the soul. And so all of those laws will kick into action trying to trigger your fear, trying mm -hmm. to help you release it. So that's, uh, in other words, trying to help you experience it. Mm -hmm. But every single energy that's in the soul, fear is included, is just an energy of a certain type or that has a certain type of nature that's individual in its, in its type or nature. Yep. And it's usually related to events and experiences and past experiences usually and past events mm -hmm. that you stored yep. rather than felt at the time. Uh -huh. So, but you could, you would have had the choice to feel it, but you would have stored it for certain reasons. Yeah. And many of those reasons are environmental. Yeah. In other words, it, that we're for, we're forced to store it via, by our environment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, you said a lot there. Yes. Um, but there's a few notes here. Perhaps if we walk through those notes. Sure. And then we can maybe expand a little bit on what you said in some of those points. Because we want to find the flavour of fear. What, what, <laughs> what, what, you know, so I've said a very general answer to what fear is, which also yep. applies to every other emotion. Which is that it's energy. Um, that, that either is stored or expressed. It's yes. either stored or in motion. Yes. It's one of those two things. Yeah. And depending on whether it's stored or in motion, it has different effects upon our life Correct. and upon our soul and upon ourselves and those around us. Correct. But every type of energy, yep. so of which fear is one type, has a different way that it gets created, uh -huh. a different way it gets stored, yep. or a different way it gets expressed. Yes. God made our souls that way so that we store and express every individual type of energy in different ways. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. and, and this is what we need to understand, that every single type of emotion we can ask questions about. So there's yep. literally hundreds of different emotions that we could ask questions about. Every one of them has a specific flavour because it's a certain type of energy yeah. that is stored or expressed from the soul. So I think it's great that we're talking about fear mm -hmm. because that is uh, an emotion that is largely stored and not expressed on Correct. the planet, isn't Correct. it? Correct, yes. So um, let's... You know, get... it's there's often a... a Unfortunately, with fear, it's often stored and then expressed, but using other techniques, unfortunately. So, in other words, it's the fear itself is not expressed. The fear itself is not experienced. We often substitute other emotions for its experience. Yeah. And that's why we never get to the bottom of our fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, let's talk specifically just about what fear. is fear. Yeah. Yep. So, you've said it's a type of energy within the soul. Yes. And fear, from what you just said, is unique in that it's stored and expressed in a very specific way. Correct. And we call that fear. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, from our notes here, we're saying fear is an energy based uh, or a belief based on an error. Correct. So there are certain emotions that are beliefs based on truth. Mm -hmm. They will always generally be pleasurable to experience. Right. And then there are certain emotions that are beliefs based upon error, mm -hmm. and they will always generally be painful to experience. So there's always a link between the type of emotion yeah. and the type of experience. So yeah. and we need to understand that. So fear is a type of energy that is stored that's based upon certain events that have create, both created pain, but it's also about a belief system that we hold on to that it's out of harmony with love or truth. The belief system itself that's out of harmony with love and truth creates, creates fear. fear. Yep. Gotcha. Now, 
when I say it's out of harmony with love or truth, I'm saying it's out of harmony with God's love and God's truth, mm -hmm. not out of harmony with the truth of our experience. Yep. So many people have fearful experiences created within their soul. And remember, it's not the creation of the experience that causes the fear to remain within the soul. It's our unwillingness to release the fear that causes it to remain in our soul. Mm -hmm. But fear is an experience, generally triggered by an experience, an energy that's triggered by an experience we've had that causes us now to have a false belief about that experience yep. from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we have fear about the experience. Yeah. And that's an emotion, it's an energy that's now either stored or if it's an emotion, felt mm -hmm. inside of us yeah. and yeah. not referred to the outside in any way unless we store it. Yes, yeah, so that's another interesting thing you've said about fear is that it affects the way we perceive reality and different stimulus based on only if it's stored within us. Based on stored past experiences that we have not felt. Yep. Yes. Yep. Very important. Yes. Um, and it creates a, a what I would classify as an unrealistic expectation of our current experience. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it makes us see our current experience completely different to what it really is from God's perspective. And this is when you refer to a filter, this is what you're talking about. It's yes. this filter through which we see and experience and yes. analyse different events and situations. The and emotion causes us to sense or feel that a future experience will mirror a past experience. Yeah. And therefore, we have a feeling, an emotion inside of us that gets created, that we wish to avoid that potential future experience. And, and, the, and that emotion is driven by, uh, sorry, that, that desire mm -hmm. is driven by the sensation of fear that exists within our soul that we haven't released. Which is stored. So Which this is, is stored. The stored sensation then um, begins to guide, actually, our it actions. It completely controls our actions, mm -hmm. completely. In fact, we become addicted and in fact, in, we, we feel almost a sense of panic if we don't allow it to guide our actions. Yeah. In fact, the fear is triggered when we don't allow it to guide our actions. When we allow it to guide our actions, we then begin to believe we don't have any fear. Mm. That's the irony of a lot of these emotions is when we suppress them so strongly, we begin to think we don't have it yeah. when actually that's guiding our every action. And this is why most people have no idea what's going on inside of themselves or why their painful experiences are being created every day because they don't understand how much they're suppressed and resisted and denied and emotions and, and the ones that we substitute for them are actually pushing our actions in mm. every direction. Mm. Yeah. So fear ranges from a slight, slight feeling of, what would you call it? Anxiety, anxiety or, yeah. right the way through in its extreme cases to absolute terror. So, so there's a wide range of types of energy from this slight anxiety right the right way through to absolute terror, which would all be able to be bundled into this banner of fear yep. as a type or group of different emotions that we either store or express. Mm. And really, they, from what we've talked about before, fear only becomes an emotion when it's expressed, doesn't it? Yes. When it's felt by us. Yes, it's only, all of these energies are only emotions when they are felt. Up until that point, they are potential energies, if yep. you like. They, they have potential to be felt. Yeah. But again, how we use our will in our soul will determine whether they are actually felt or not. Uh -huh. And what we do with our will greatly determines what will happen to the emotion, yep. whether it gets stored or expressed. Yeah. Yep. And obviously you've said when it's stored, that's because there's been a fearful situation or event or circumstance in the past. Yes, or... with one extra thing happening and that is it was suppressed. Yes. So the experience of it had to have been suppressed mm. in some way, either, either by ourselves or by our, someone or something in our environment. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the next point we have in our notes is, is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Unfelt fear becomes a desire. 
yes. or an addiction to act upon, to yes. put it another way. Yes, yeah. if it, it's not really a pure desire, of course, so we could use the term desire in quotation marks. So, and by pure, you mean in harmony with love or Of course, every an time I mention a pure anything, yes. it's always something that's in harmony with God's love or God's truth. Okay. So parts of the teachings of divine truth is any time there's purity or sincerity or ethics in our, our emotions, it's always going to be in harmony with God's love or truth. Anytime there's any pain or other kinds of experiences, uh, uh, you know, unethical or so forth, then they are all going to be out of harmony with God's mm -hmm. love or truth. So I'm always, every time I talk about ethics or any of these other things, they're always going to be things that are in harmony with God's love and truth. Okay. So, so in this case, when I use the term desire, normally I would talk about desire that's in harmony with God's love or truth. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's a desire in quotation marks yeah. because it's addiction. Yeah. And it's an incessant feeling inside of the soul that's generated to mask the fear. Yeah. So the desire to suppress or deny or resist the fear causes an alternate construction. Mm -hmm. And the alternate construction is we then desire to have an addiction met that will suppress the fear. Yeah. And when I say desire, I use that term very loosely Loose. there. Yeah. So now what's happening is that we've got all this fear inside of us that we're suppressing and not recognizing, but now we think that we have desires to do certain things <laughs> yeah. that we don't actually have a pure desire to do. Yeah. It's driven by the fear itself to do it. So this is, a, if I can give an emotional example yeah. of this, uh, for example, a person who is in deep fear about what other people think about them will desire to please other people. And after a while, they'll think that the desire to please other people is pure, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's only driven by the desire to avoid certain things from those people. So in other words, it's an addiction. Yeah. It's not a pure desire. So it's going to create further pain. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an, that's an emotional uh, example, I suppose you could say. A physical example could be just uh, taking substances. Mm -hmm. The desire to take a substance, like get drunk every day or every week, the desire to get drunk every week, obviously is very damaging to the human body. It's very damaging to your soul because you, you get overcloaked by spirits in a, in a drunken state. So it's damaging to your soul. You often do things that are out of harmony with love in that state. So it's also damaging to your soul because of what you choose to do with your will. And yet we choose to do that and we think we've got to do it. We think we've got to have a drink. It's driven by this feeling that we've got to have it. We can't live without it. And after a while we tell ourselves that we shouldn't live without it, that it's an essential part of our life. And we have all sorts of justifications there as well. And all of it is driven by the fear of a certain emotion. Mm -hmm. In the case of drinking, generally a fear of sadness. So. So it's all driven by a suppressed fear yeah. that's caused this so-called desire to come up and we then act upon this so-called desire and it's not a desire at all, yeah. it's an addiction. And that's the irony of our fears. Yeah, and what I like about what, how, what you're explaining in this question is that um, at the beginning you spoke about how most of us end up, we don't want to be sensitive to our fears, our anxieties, our terrors, and so we can get to this place where we believe we don't have any fear. Or we, or we know we have a few, but they're not, they're they're not, not causing any discomfort in our day-to-day -day life yeah. generally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and, and further to that, we can even get to a point where we believe our deepest desires and heartfelt passions are really sincere and loving, but actually, they are all in the pursuit of just avoiding fear totally as much driven, as we can. Totally yeah. driven by fear. So I see this with a lot of uh, the men who, who we see in our seminars. Many of them are women pleasers. Mm -hmm. Now they think that that is a pure desire yeah. and it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's out of harmony with love and truth. Quite often they are bending love and truth just to be pleasing the women. Yeah. Quite often they, if they were in harmony with love and truth they wouldn't be able to please their women under certain circumstances. But they choose to please their women because they think they've, they've got to and they, they feel driven to do it and they actually think it's a good thing. Mm. But it's driven by fear mm. of what the women will do when the man doesn't please them. Right? Yep. So, so what might the woman do? She might withdraw sex, for example, which means that he has a withdraw, he has now been withdrawn, any physical approval of his body has now been withdrawn. She may get angry and yell at him and therefore he knows that he's displeased her somehow. 
and so forth. So he may be avoiding all sorts of painful experiences through this thing. Mm. So he, he then thinks it's a desire. He then thinks it's real and it's not. Mm. He has no desire actually internally to truly please a woman for no benefit at all. Yeah. In other words, none of his desire to please a woman is based around any pure desire within him that's in harmony with love and truth. Mm. All of his desires are completely out of harmony with love and truth mm. to please a woman. And of course, it's going to cause further problems. Mm. The woman's going to become a monster eventually who, who basically demands everything from him. And sooner or later, he'll have so much pain about it that eventually he'll rebel. Mm. <laughs> and that's the inevitable result of him taking such actions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. OK, so let's talk about finally something that you've said a lot in seminars, that fear is actually false, appearing real or true yes. from an emotional perspective. Yes. So can you explain what you mean by this from an emotional perspective? Or? From an emotional perspective, we believe something to be true when it's actually false. So, for example, if I'm afraid, in the previous example I gave where, where the man is pandering to the woman, mm. he believes that pandering to the woman is going to create more love. That's a false belief. Yeah. He believes that pandering to the woman will mean that the woman won't be angry with him. And that's a false belief. He believes that pandering to the woman is good from God's perspective. And that's a false belief. Yeah. He believes that pandering to the woman is loving her. And that's also a false mm -hmm. belief. He believes so many things that are false. Yes. And, and false beliefs are the creators of fear. Mm. And, because we're, and, and when I say fear, they are, these beliefs are emotional beliefs. They're not intellectual thoughts. Yeah. They are emotional beliefs that are all being generally created through the suppression of some emotion in the childhood. Mm -hmm. In other words, there were some painful experiences, in this case with the man, there have obviously been some painful experiences between men and women that he has been involved in in his childhood, which have now caused him to believe that he must take these particular actions in the suppression of his fear of those particular feelings. Yep. He wants to suppress the feelings, the true causal feelings, which are usually grief. Mm -hmm. And he uses his fear and fear was probably used on him mm -hmm. to suppress those, that grief. And then he acts now in his desires, which are actually addictions, in order to suppress the acknowledgement of the fear that he has in those situations. Yeah. And all of that is based upon false beliefs. False beliefs that he can't handle his pain, false beliefs about women, false beliefs about what men, good men do, yeah. and so forth. And in, oftentimes with any emotion, we may have a hundred false beliefs. So, you know, this is the complexity, this is why emotions become complex. Yeah. Because we often have so many false beliefs that are covering over the experience of the actual emotion that, that could heal us that we go on with collecting more and more false beliefs and therefore suppressing more and more of our unexperienced emotions, mm. Mm. which of course causes so much damage to our soul. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's debilitating, isn't it? Yes. Fear. So fear is an interesting one. A group of emo it's an interesting group of emotions, fear is, because, it's a, so, because they are the types of emotions that create a layer over deeper heal, healing-based emotions. Yeah. So fear creates a layer over shame, fear creates a layer over grief and so forth. Yeah. And these kind of fear-based emotions then used in the justification of suppression. And so fear is unusual in that regard too, in that often when we deny fear, we then engage in large amounts of self-deception. Mm -hmm. and, and many people on the planet obviously have large amounts of self-deception because they are completely un, unacknowledging of their own fears, which are all there to prevent them from feeling deeper, more painful emotions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There's so much to it, isn't there? And I know that as we go through this series, we're going to talk uh, more about fear and we're also going to address some questions um, from fearful people <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> who would like some answers. We're going to talk about fear, anger and all sorts of emotions in this series, obviously. Yeah because you know there's been hundreds and hundreds of questions asked about all sorts of emotions and as anybody who's ever listened to any of the seminars knows often people have interrupted me many times with all sorts of questions about emotions yeah. so we want to address a lot of these questions but it's very very important that people understand the dynamics of their emotions mm -hmm. and and what often they believe are desires 
are actually fears that, are, that we use addictions to suppress. And that's yeah. a sad state of affairs, unfortunately. So a lot of people think they're doing something they really want to do when they're not doing it for any other reason than to suppress a deeper emotion. And also often some of the things that are really a part of our true nature and personality uh, we have fears associated with. And so we feel like we don't want to do things that really when we deal with fear, we discover we really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it works both ways, doesn't it? It does. We end yeah. up involved in activities and pursuits that uh, we think we really want to do, but yes. are, are actually there because we're suppressing fear. And we avoid things that really make us come alive yes. because we want to avoid fear. Correct. Yeah. So if we look at the nature of this group of emotions that we could classify as fear, the nature of these groups of emotions is that we use fear to deny desire. Mm -hmm. So it actually, true desire, now, now I'm talking about pure desire, which is all based around God's love and truth. We, we are often suppressing pure or true desire because our addictions are substitute desire. Yeah. So, so fear has this nature where we're using substitutions for real desire. And that's the sad part about it. We think we're actually having desires that we're not actually having that are pure. Yeah. They're all driven by addiction in order to avoid fears. And, and this is why the majority of people have no idea what their pure desires are either, <laughs> because they're so full of fear that they want only their addictions met. Mm -hmm. and, so, and addictions are interesting too. Addictions are driven by this feeling that you've got to do it. You've got to do it, you know, yeah. just like a physical addiction is the same, isn't it? If, if you feel like you need a drink of alcohol, you've got to have a drink of alcohol now, you know. Yeah. If you feel like you need a cigarette, it's, I've got to have a cigarette now, I can't do anything else. And in fact, it becomes so demanding that you'll drop anything to, st to, 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 do. to do it. Yeah. And that's the nature of fear-based addictions or desires. They are all, drip, they all drive us incessantly to this point that we have to drop everything in order to achieve them. Mm -hmm. And they are not pure desires generally. They mm -hmm. are all fear-based desires mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or fear-based addictions, we should really call them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So fear so is an unusual emotion in a lot of ways, isn't it? It's, a, it's, an, it's an unusual group of emotions. Uh, that that we do all sorts of things to avoid. Yeah, yeah. If we recap then everything you've said, mm -hmm. uh, fear can be anything from anxiety to extreme terror, yes. mild anxiety to extreme terror. So it's a group terror. of emotions from anxiety to extreme terror. Yep. We're often, it can either be experienced as an emotion or suppressed. Correct. And then it, if it's suppressed, it creates filters or it, influences the way we make decisions and the way we see the world yes uh, in a negative way always in a negative it, way because it's out of fear is out of harmony with god's love and truth yep so so every time we suppress fear or store it within our soul it is always going to have a negative uh, reflection upon how we see the world and it's always going to create pain mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. it's always going to create pain and if we store it it's going to create suffering long-term pain yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yep, so then we get suffering and we can also end up in a situation where our desires are muddled, where they're not... Totally, we suppress pure. our real desires yeah. and we act upon addictive yeah. desires. Yeah, mm. okay. Mm. So, so I find if people understand the basic mechanics of fear and what happens, then when it comes to talking about fear and how we can address fears, Obviously, when we go back to these basic mechanics, we'll be able to understand them better. And therefore, we can answer many hundreds of questions about fear in, in a few questions, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so just finally, on that point, we talked a lot about what happens when we suppress fear. Mm -hmm. um, but let's contrast that to when fear becomes an emotion and it flows. What what is the dynamic of what happens there and what effect does that have? Sure. When the fear is felt, in other words, experienced and flows, the, it's now energy in motion. Mm -hmm. It's now an emotion flowing within the soul. It doesn't have any long-term detrimental effects at all, in fact. 
there, there, what will happen initially is you have a feeling of the fear itself and remember that will range from mild anxiety right the way through to absolute extreme terror. Yeah. And um, in that process of feeling the fear, you will go through the bodily process of experiencing the fear, you'll go through the emotional process of experiencing the fear. But it will no longer attract any events and it will also no longer affect the filters mm -hmm. of the rest of your life. And so obviously, if you allow yourself or choose to feel your fears, it has some very, very good positive effects on your life. In other words, fear no longer guides any of your future actions or current actions. It no longer filter, no, no longer are your decisions filtered through mm -hmm. the fear itself. Mm -hmm. So the way you see the world is completely different to mm -hmm. how you would have seen the world before. Mm -hmm. And you also are no longer governed by the desire to meet its addictions. Yeah. So in other words, you're no longer driven to have certain addictions met to suppress your fear. Yep. So obviously this is going to cause a lot of benefits to your life mm -hmm. uh, rather than detrimental effects on your soul. So basically you're saying when, when a stimulus comes along that, uh, that generates fear mm -hmm. and we allow that yes then within that we allow the bodily experience of that fear and the sensation emotionally to pass through, through us. us that's yes. how it becomes in motion you actually feel you will feel it in your body and yeah. you'll feel the sensations you'll get sweaty and yeah. initially perhaps and then you might shake and yeah. all sorts of things might happen as a result you may finish up crying a lot or, or, or being absolutely terrified and find mm -hmm. yourself just screaming in terror. Yeah. Um, in the end, all of these things are far better than storing it. Uh -huh. And on, obviously this is, what, what, this is a problem with judgment that most of the people on the earth have is that they don't see screaming in terror as better than, than mm. suppressing it, mm. so they suppress it. Mm. And that's what causes the storage of the fear and then it causes these longer term detrimental effects on you your own life and your own health. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And when we do that, when we allow it, we have these benefits of staying in touch with reality, mm -hmm. uh, of love having the possibility to guide our actions rather than always being guided by, by the desire to yep. suppress fear. Yeah, which yep. are addictions. We'll always be guided by addictions while we have fear within us that mm -hmm. is suppressed. Mm -hmm. And so also within that, you're saying that when we have suppressed fear, we always have to act to suppress it, obviously. Yes. It's an ongoing process of and that's why our, our will. That's why we have the imperative of maintaining our addictions. That's why it feels exhausting to live with fear well, when we're suppressing it all the time. Uh, well, for most people, they're not as exhausted as they really need to feel because the reality is they're getting all of their addictions to create the suppression of any feeling of exhaustion of suppressing right. their fear. So, so, so they're, they're even layers above that, you know, that yeah. they're operating in. They're not even close to feeling their fear. When a person gets close to feeling their fear but is not yet feeling it, that's a period usually when they feel quite exhausted because you have to fight it quite strongly to, in order to suppress it. Yeah. Um, but once you get through whatever false beliefs and judgments that are, uh, have occurred to cause you to do that, you'll just let yourself experience your fear. And that's when you go through that healing process with your fear. And so that's, that's then um, when we have been, so we have the opportunity first when the fear is created to feel it, mm -hmm. but then me most of us have by now suppressed the majority of that Correct. And from we, our childhood and beyond. And we're so used to doing it that it's automatic almost. Yeah. You know, it's like no automatic process. behaviour. Yeah. There's no even sense of fear. It's just straight to addiction. There's a belief inside of us that causes us to automatic suppress and we don't even think about it. There's hardly any, you know, there's no thoughts going on at this point. Yeah. We're just suppressing it immediately. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you're <coughs> saying that's where most people live. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we have this choice now as adults to open up and to stop suppressing fear uh, and we have to go through a process of removing the addiction or Well, not even, well there's it. a lo lot of layers which we can yeah. talk about later but yeah. they ro range from de complete denial and wanting to no longer deny even intellectually that you ha must have some yeah, yeah. right the way through to denial of the fear itself 
right, which is all about your addiction. So in other words, you deny that you have any addictions. That yes. you, you think that all the things you do are in complete desire when none of them are. They're all in basically complete addiction. Yeah. And once you realise that, you then go through acknowledging your addictions and so forth, and then you get to emotionally feel what the results are of most of your addictions and how icky, you know, they feel, how bad they feel to mm. you. And then you go through that process and then now you come to some acknowledgement of, of your fears. Yep. And once you start getting to that place that you often feel exhausted and you feel because you Cause can't go. Fighting. Yeah, because you can't go back to your addictive processes yep. or suppression. Yep. But but you're also not yet going into your fear. And so you you're now in this state where you're now starting to feel anxious about having to go through your fear, but you don't want to revert back to other behaviours that are all suppressing your fear. Yep. And this is layer upon layer that you need to go through in order to get to the stage where you feel your fear. And most people but have not got to that state. No. Most people have heard of for six years haven't got to that state. They're still heavily in their addictions or denial of their addictions. Yeah. Um, usually that's the state that most people maintain for most of their life on earth. Mm. Uh, but presumably when we get past that final barrier that you talked about, mm -hmm. of like willfully trying to, without using any addictions, just trying to hold on. Yes. Um, when we go over into now experiencing the fear that we've suppressed for so long. Yes, and to do that, you have to have released all of these barriers to doing so. All the stuff you put, the beliefs and the addictions and all of that stuff. Correct. But that process is presumably much more relieving. Yes, you, you have extreme relief actually. Your body goes through this relaxation process uh, you, on that particular subject, whatever that subject is that you're releasing your fear about. And you, your whole life changes instantly. Actually, all of your attractions change instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you really feel some of your fear, all of your attractions change instantly. The way in which you interact with every person around you on that particular subject is instantly changed. Mm -hmm. You see the world completely differently. You see how God's created it completely differently than what you thought. And, and what was guiding your every thought and every feeling before and every action before and every word before now isn't guiding all of those things anymore. So you're far more free to allow for uh, new experiences, new, new feelings, new thoughts that you were completely blocked to up until that point. So, so it's an incredibly freeing experience once you actually get to feeling some of the fear. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds it's a, very attractive. Well, it is very attractive. <laughs> and, and that's the sad thing is that most people don't realise how attractive it is. Um, they don't realise how, how, how big the benefits are to actually getting to the point of feeling and experiencing your fears as they truly are. Uh, it is such a freeing experience that it changes your entire life, in fact. In fact, the only opposition to truth and love is fear in most cases. It's not grief, mm -hmm. it's fear of mm -hmm. grief. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so once you don't have any fear at all, you will process all of your emotions pretty much instantly yeah. and therefore you will have no resistance to love and truth yeah. inside of you yeah. and, and that's a beautiful place to be. You can get to the point where you can process every single thing as it occurs and not even have a negative experience while you do so mm -hmm. once you've received enough of God's love to be in that condition. But while you've got fear, you will never, never get into the state of being in the condition of being at one with God and therefore never get into the state where you'll actually have permanent pleasure. Mm. Yep. Mm. So there are so many positive benefits of going through your fear. So many. Uh, and we can't list them all, obviously. No. Uh, but there are just so many in terms of how it changes your life, how it changes the life of people around you, how it affects your impressions on the environment, how it affects your projections onto the environment, how it affects the, every single living creature around you, how it affects every single organism that's within your body. Mm -hmm. All of those organisms change in their operation once you release fear on certain subjects. So it, there, there are so many changes that occur with that one, with that one proper release that uh, once you've done it once or twice, the average person, they'll, they'll not resist it anywhere near as much as they, they have done in the past. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The problem is getting a person to actually go through it at least once. <laughs> What's the famous quote? Someone, some great leader somewhere on, in the history of the earth said, the, oh, maybe it was Martin Luther King, I don't know. The, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like that, you know. 
Yes, I think a lot of the times people have a large amount of fear about feeling fear. Yeah. So I wouldn't call that fear of fear. I would call it a fear of feeling, the sensation yes. of fear, yeah. Yeah. Which, is a, which is really a fear of pain yeah. that people are expressing. And, and I feel that if you have so much fear, you'll never, and you don't ever release it, you will never experience the joy and peace that comes from the release of fear. Mm. And, and your whole life will change in so many ways that most people, it's impossible for most people to even understand how many ways their life will change once they release fear. Yeah. Their yeah. life changes in so many ways. It's, there's so many almost uncountable ways that life changes that you become conscious of after you've gone through the experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you also have faith generally after the experience. You have faith that processing emotion actually has a positive benefit. Until people go through their fear, they normally don't have that faith at all. I, I feel it's difficult to have faith in even the goodness of God and the world around Correct. us when we live in fear. Correct. It's impossible to have real faith with fear. Yeah. Fear, as you, relieve, you get more faith, fear, you automatically find that you, you have less fear. Mm. Or, or I, should, I should say that it often happens the opposite way around. As you get rid of fear, you then gain more faith mm. through the process. If people would only make the start, yeah. and it's like a lot of the things with regard to divine truth, if they'd only make the start, <laughs> <laughs> then they'd realise the benefits and, and most people have yet to make a true start when it comes to actually allowing themselves to experience the fear that's within them. And it's where theory becomes practice and knowledge, isn't it? Correct. It, it's that, yeah. that start where emotion, real emotions begin, yes. long suppressed emotions begin to flow yes. and not just dealing with addictions, but that yes. is when truth comes to us, isn't yes. it? Yes, you will not know anything about emotions at all while you retain large amounts of fear in your soul that you don't experience. Mm. You must go through the experience of feeling your emotions before you'll start to understand a lot of things like desire and a lot of things like sadness and other emotions and addictions and all these other things you won't understand. So it would just be an intellectual presentation. It won't be things you understand until you go through the feeling the actual feeling of your fear. Yeah. And this is why I say to people that feeling your fear is one of the most important things that you can do to come from a condition of sin into a condition of perfection. Mm -hmm. and, and fear is an enemy to your perfection. And rather than seeing it as something you should fear, you need to see it as something that you need to embrace so that it's no longer the enemy that you make it. So that's why I gave some talks about fear is your friend. Yeah. Fear tells you when you have false beliefs that are out of harmony with love. Fear tells you what you need to do inside of yourself. Fear is a, a friend in that regard, yeah. but, but it's a friend only if we allow its experience. Yeah. If, we, if we hold on to its experience and suppress its experience, it becomes a terrible enemy to our well-being then. Mm -hmm. But fear has the potential of being our friend as long as we embrace the process. And it, and it is, in fact, something that God helped us to, you know, God created the potential of these emotions. God didn't create the emotion of fear. So I must point that out. Yeah. The emotion of fear has only ever been created by humanity. And God does not have the emotion of fear inside of, inside of God at all. Yeah. And God does not engender fear inside of any one of God's creations. Yeah. So there's no need to fear God, for example. <laughs> God, God, though, created the potential through your free will for you to go into belief systems emotionally that are out of harmony with love and truth. Mm -hmm. And that means then that God created the, the potential for you to create fear. Mm. And fear is mankind's own creation. Mm. Perhaps that's a good way, place to leave it because our next question is going to be about sure. how fear, how is, fear created. is created. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good.